Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you a super cool recipe for how to make kale rolls. Now usually I would use cabbage, most people use cabbage for your uh, rolls like this, but tonight I'm using kale. I just harvested some of my beautiful purple Russian kale and boy are these leaves never pretty. What's nice about these leaves is that they're a lot more tender than a piece of cabbage would be, a leaf of cabbage. So these guys are going to cook a lot quicker. In fact, we're going to let them cook in the oven. I don't even think we need to blanch these guys. As long as I can roll them, uh, which I can, they are very pliable and they won't break. So that's great. And they're soft enough to do so. So that's number one. So I've got to wash all these guys and I'm going to get in the meantime one pound of lean ground beef fried up here and then saw in a frying pan. So a little bit of oil in your frying pan and you're just going to brown this up, breaking it into nice chunks. Now we're just going to season the meat up with some salt and pepper. You have to make sure that the meat is very flavorful before you start stuffing it. Now, I've already made some nice um, rice that's already cooked and ready to go, so make sure you have that on hand. Day-old rice usually works better. My rice was cooked last night for dinner, so it's perfect. Now, these rolls are really whatever you want to make them tonight. Um, we typically do our cabbage rolls with dill and make them kind of Eastern European. Tonight, I'm not going to do that with the kale rolls. We're going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit more savory, maybe a little bit southwest and uh, that's how we're going to roll with it. So I put a little bit of ancho powder in there, I put some chili powder in there, I put a little bit of cumin in there, salt and pepper of course. Feel free to add some garlic powder, onion powder, whatever you like. Or you can also saute up some onions and garlic with your meat right now. Oh, and don't forget the smoked paprika. Okay, I'm going to get my washed leaves prepared. Now when you grow your own stuff at home, sometimes you get little things like this. So you're just going to pick off any imperfections or cut them off and make sure that they're nice and clean on both sides. Next things next, you want to use the whole, um, the whole leaf part. So I'm going to cut the stalk right there. Don't throw these out. These little bits can be used for greens as a side dish on any time. You can save them in your refrigerator for tomorrow. Um, also the stalks can be put into resealable plastic bags in the freezer so that you can use them when you make soups and stews. Okay, this stock is still pretty thick. You can see it better on the back side. It's still pretty thick here. So I'm going to cut it out probably up to here and just cut out the stock part leaving the leaf on both sides. Just like you would do cabbage when you're ready to roll it. And you're going to repeat these with all of your leaves. Also, I have some extra leaves that may not look so good or maybe smaller and I won't be able to roll them. But it's going to line the bottom of my baking dish as well as lining the top of my rolls to keep the moisture in while they're baking. So I've just minced up about a tablespoon of fresh parsley and a tablespoon of fresh cilantro from my garden and it's going into the meat now that it's almost done. Now I know that looks like a lot of herbs but we also have to season this rice as well. So you're adding a little bit more than you typically would to just meat. I'm just going to grease up the bottom of my um, baking dish and I'm going to place my less than perfect leaves on the bottom. You can also use these little leaves that came off of the stalks for this purpose. This is all edible stuff. Okay, my meat is done. Looks good. I used lean ground beef so I don't have any extra fat to pour out. Um, you're going to just let this cool for a minute, but we're going to taste test this to make sure that it's tasty first. Mmm, very flavorful. Mmm, perfect. So just let that meat cool for a minute because you're going to have to handle it to be able to fill these um, little leaves. So let it sit for a second. Okay, so I'm just mixing um, the rice with the meat. I'm eyeballing how much rice I'm going to use. I don't know, maybe three, four cups. I'm not really sure how many this is going to fill. I'm just going to eyeball it. That's maybe three cups, I would say. And in goes the beef. I like a mixture that has slightly a bit more rice than meat. Some people like more meat. Some people like more rice. Use whatever you like. You could even do vegetarian food. If you don't use all of this um, meat and rice stuffing, you can use it for other things. You can use it to stuff quesadillas and tacos and burritos, as well as mushroom caps or whatever else you feel like stuffing um, and baking. Just break that rice up, break any clumps of meat up so it's nice and evenly combined. Now we need to taste this to make sure that it's flavorful too. Mm, that sure is good. Boy. Okay, it's leaf stuffing time. Now, if you have giant leaves, so you can see that this is two halves, right? This half and this half. If you have giant leaves, you may just use one half at a time 
or you can use the whole leaf and roll a much bigger roll. And I might just go ahead and leave them whole today just to keep them from breaking and to keep them a little bit bigger. That's cool with me. They don't always have to be the same. You want to use the back side to roll so the outside is out. Kale leaves tend to curl that way anyway naturally, so you're good to go. Some of them you may have to cut into half just because. So you're gonna roll these up sort of like a present. You're gonna put it in the center here at the bottom. You're gonna fold the edges in and roll it in. Now, when you roll it, Try and push those edges in a little bit to make sure that everything stays in, stays in. All right, I'm on my last one. If you wanted to mix these with cabbage as well, or Swiss chard or something like that, big, large, leafy vegetables, go ahead. And they fit perfectly in my baking dish. I wasn't sure, but we have a whole nice baking dish full. Aren't they pretty? I have some extra stuffing left for anything else I want to do this week. You could even stuff uh, green peppers with these in, and uh, roast them in the oven. Fantastic. Now when you're rolling these guys, be a little bit gentle with them as you did not blanch the leaves beforehand to soften them up. Just be careful. I did pretty good. A couple of them are a little bit loose, but as they um, cook in the oven, all's well. They look very pretty. Now I happen to have the pan juices of um, these ribs that we did last night. You may use chicken juice, anything like that, uh, drippings from your roast, anything. But if you don't have that, that's no problem. We typically will use, and get this, a can of tomato soup. And I would just smear that all on the top. I might use half a can today, but first things first, I wanna get this flavorful uh, pan drippings on top of here. Now I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And I'm just taking um, this tomato soup, about half a, half a jar I'm going to use, half a can, and I'm just going to smear it on the top, all over them. I want that to all melt in there. It has a much different flavor than if you would just use tomatoes or just tomato sauce or something like that. It's not the same. This uh, tomato sweet, it's just a little bit sweet, it coats nicely. It's just what my mom used, what her mom used. Uh, it always seems to work perfectly for us and gives us a beautiful flavor on all of our rolls. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to use a fresh tomato and I'm going to slice it nice and thinly. I like to use a serrated knife. If you don't have a really sharp knife, a serrated knife works beautifully to chop, um, to slice tomatoes very, very thinly. Okay. Now I'm going to just layer these so that it's just covering top. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do is sprinkle these little um, leaves that came off the stalks all over the top. This is all edible. I'm going to leave one big leaf for uh, covering the whole top. Just scatter these on. You want to try and hold the moisture in, give it a little bit more flavor as well, and get a little bit more, more nutrition as well. So that's what we have going on there. And now I'm gonna put that final leaf on the top and it's ready to go into the oven. I'm going to cover it up. Make sure you spray your foil with a little bit of spray so it doesn't stick to your food. And voila, that is ready to go. Now this is gonna probably go, well see cabbage rolls usually go for about an hour. These are probably gonna take 45 minutes-ish. They're not nearly as, um, need as much tenderizing as the cabbage leaves do. But I'm gonna check it in about 30 minutes just to make sure everything's all right. All right, 350 degrees, 30 minutes. Let's check on these kale bowls. Boy, everything smells fantastic. Ooh wee. Just gonna peek underneath here. What you're looking for is the kale to be nice and tender. And I just wanna peek underneath to see if it is. I'm gonna puncture one to just see. I'm gonna let these guys go, probably for the whole time. Let's let them roll. Back in the oven, 350 for at least another 20, 30 minutes. Let's go. All right, let's check these guys. All right, open it away from you. 
gorgeous. All right, I'm going to take this top leaf off because it's not so pretty. And I'm just gonna test them, and those are much better now. So that's what we have, that's what it looks like right now. You have those top leaves, and those are edible, and I'll be serving them alongside um, with the tomatoes on top and the rolls underneath. Now I'm gonna take off about half of the uh, topping here just so that we can, you can see what's going on underneath. And there you go, there's the uh, cooked kale rolls right there on that side, and these ones are topped with the um, topping still. So that's what you've got going on. I would say that this would feed three or four people tonight. Um, that's how we're rolling with it. So let's serve these up. Now I like to serve mine with sour cream. Gotta have sour cream. I'm also serving it with a little bit of those side greens and the uh, tomato together. And I've just minced up some cilantro. Go ahead and mince up cilantro or parsley as you feel you like. Gorgeous, this is what we've got going on. Isn't that beautiful? So there's my little um, kale rolls. They kind of look like doma, uh, grape leaves, stuffed grape leaves, but they're much bigger. <laughs> Let me try these guys. All right, here we go. There's a sour cream on them. Nicely. Mmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. The kale is nice. I like kale because it has just a tiny bit of a, of a bitter flavor like how other greens do. Fantastic. Oh, boy, that's tasty. So that's what we have in there. We've got um, the inside is nicely mingled with beautiful flavor. It's nice and moist in there. The leaves are nice and tender. Very, very good. The leaves retained their um, integrity and held everything together. They do remind me more of the texture of Doma. Very, very nice. See, with Doma too, with grape leaves, I don't blanch the leaves before I use them either. I just throw them in the tray. So that's probably why I'm getting the same texture. Mm. Fabulous. Mm. Boy, those are good. Mmm, that filling, very, very tasty. A nice change from the typical Eastern European way with the dill. It's nice with the cilantro. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The extra kale leaves and the to roasted tomato that was on top, very, very tasty as well. Nice little accompaniment. Anyhow, that's how you do it. They weren't too hard, you can do them too. It's just cool that you can use other things other than just cabbage. Use, use your imagination and let it go run wild. Anyhow, that's how you do it. That's how you cook kale rolls. That's how you make them. Very easy. All right, check me out. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cooking with Kimberly, youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly, and you can find me on Roku. Come to my website at cookingwithkimberly.com. Come interact with me. Let me know what's going down in your culinary world. Make sure you do a subscribe as well. This show is brought to you by BAM Niagara Boxing Club. Don't hate, get in shape. Make sure you register for classes at bamniagara.ca. That's it, that's all. Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.